Hey everybody, it's Kyla. I lost my voice, but that's not going to stop me from talking about the debt ceiling. So the debt ceiling fight isn't about debt. The debt ceiling is stupid. I've made a bunch of videos on it so far. Nobody wants to deal with it, and the politicians really should not get paid until this is solved. So we're going to talk today about the history of the debt ceiling, what it is, what happened, and what the solutions that we're looking at are. For the history of the debt ceiling, it was born in 1917, and the debt ceiling was created to make sure that the government doesn't borrow past a certain limit encourage fiscal discipline, basically make sure that the government isn't being stupid, which is kind of ironic. But now it is stupid. The debt ceiling has created stupidity. It was mostly created so they didn't always have to ask permission to issue new bonds, but now it's being used as a political football, an act of theater. So what is it? Because the debt ceiling does not authorize new spending, Congress does that on their own, which is also a nightmare. The debt ceiling just allows the government to borrow money so that it can pay the obligations that already exist. The government is funded by bonds and taxes, and when we reach this debt ceiling limit, we have to rely on taxes, which is never enough to cover the spending that we need. So we're at that point. We breached the debt limit in January, and since then, the Treasury Department has been delaying payments and running down cash balances, and now the question is the day that we don't have enough money to do this anymore. This is known as the X date, the day that we just run out of cash. April tax receipts were down almost 40% this year, so everyone's like, maybe we're going to run out of money in July, but it's increasingly seeming like we're going to run out of money in June, which is terrifying. Recent cash flow figures from the Treasury suggest that no one knows if they'll even make it to June 15th, which is a key tax payment day. And this is important because the Treasury funds the government, and there are issues with their money. So going back to that point about cash balances, the Treasury's cash balance fell to $87 billion on Monday from $140 billion on Friday, partially due to an unexpected large volume of state and local government securities redemptions. Treasury straight up run out of cash, and they have emergency measures, but they've run through almost all of the $88 billion that they have in extraordinary measures. Yellen can do other things. Luckily, investors are still reluctantly buying government debt. The Treasury on Wednesday sold $39 billion of 17-week bills at 5.1%. Treasury bills maturing in early June, so around this X date number where people are like, the government's going to run out of money, continue to trade at a discount to other securities, so people are definitely spooked just based on that alone. Investors are also buying insurance on the United States. Listen to this. The cost to insure United States debt is now higher than the bonds of Greece, Mexico, and Brazil. All countries that have defaulted have horrible financial situations and credit ratings that are way lower than the United States. And it's just ridiculous that we're in this situation. The negotiations between McCarthy and Biden are dumb because they are not negotiations. The GOP is just like, hee hee, we will sabotage the country if you don't give us everything that you want. And I understand people have political leanings, whatever. That's not politics. That's just being dumb. You might say, Kyla, why are you turning into Minnie Mouse about this situation? And it's just frustrating. We hire these people, they work for us, and they're not doing anything to benefit anybody but themselves. So some potential solutions here are discharge petition. This was filed, um, and if it's signed by 218 House members, that would force a vote on a debt ceiling increase, which is what most Americans want. However, it would require the signatures of five House Republicans to force a vote, and of course GOP moderates are, ju it's just a mess. The 14th Amendment is also a mess, well, this is section, uh, but this is section four of the 14th Amendment adopted after the 1861 Civil War, stating that the validity of the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. Biden has talked about that before. It'd be a dicey if he pulled that in, but he could do it. The coin is another option, and people are like, the coin is ridiculous, and I'm here to say that the debt ceiling is ridiculous. So we better have a ridiculous solution, just to even that out. Biden could pull to unilaterally raise the debt ceiling uh, to direct the Treasury to mint a $1 trillion platinum coin and put it on deposit at the Federal Reserve, crediting the Treasury for the full base value of the coin. The Federal Reserve then gets an asset and liability matching one another, whatever. But it's a coin that will help eradicate this issue that we have. There could also be premium bonds. That also is a lot of financial engineering, which is kind of complicated. The treasury gets double the cash of the bond amount that they issue. So it only increases the debt by half of the cash that the treasury gets. And, but the thing is, underlying all of this, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Everybody just wants the debt ceiling to work. They just want to have a functioning government. The debt ceiling is meant to be this tool of austerity to protect us from spending too much money. But instead, it became a way to craft some sort of story along party lines and dance so close to the edge that markets begin to find what lines are walkable. They're looking at Wall Street to tell us what's good, which isn't a great situation to be in. And all the meaning gets lost because the story becomes so well defined. And what is all the hubbub really about? Perhaps it's so we manage our debt load, perhaps it's not. It's certainly political theater, certainly for eyeballs, it's certainly distracting. I'm really sorry about my voice. Um, this will be a podcast version as well. My newsletter will be out tomorrow, kyla.substack.com. I'm on everything Woo! at Kyla Skin. Hope y'all are doing okay out there. And I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.